Jesus in his power and in his mercy says, now take up your bed and walk. The thing that he was, that was holding him for 38 years, in one split second, God turns the whole thing around. And I want you to understand something, and I'm going to close on this point, that we serve a God of a suddenly God. See, some things happen over time. Some things happen and it takes years. Some things happen, and, and I think it's in Colossians where it says, when the fullness of time had come, and it takes a process. But some things God is going to shift in your life instantly, instantly, instantaneously. This entire encounter perhaps didn't even take five minutes. Anybody who was there who went to the bathroom would have missed the whole encounter. And they would have gone to the bathroom and seen the man laying by the pool who had been there for decades with this bed. And they came back out and he's shouting and rejoicing and holding the thing. And I want you to know that God has a way of shifting things. And he, because there are some things that God is going to shift in your life immediately. It's not going to take a long time. It's not going to take four years at the university. It's not going to take six years of training. It's not going to take a decade of studying. God said he's going to shift it right now. He's going to shift it immediately. It's going to happen from one phone call. It's going to happen from one email. It's going to happen from one encounter. And, and, and God is going to shift the whole thing. He took his bed. He's walking. And then there are people who are upset that he's gotten healed. And I'm going to tell you something. There are always going to be Pharisees in your life. There are going to be people that like you stuck where you are. When you're broken, you're busting and disgusted, they love talking to you. When everything is going wrong for you, they love to be around you. But some people can't stand when you're up. They can't stand to see you blessed. And this man who has just received the biggest blessing of his life, for 38 years he's been in one condition. A condition that has affected his entire quality of life, his relationships. His, he, he doesn't even work. He's not just, he's not just someone who is sick. He's sick and poor. He's sick and homeless. He's sick and distraught. He has no family. He has no support system. He's been 38 years captive to this disease. And in one split second, God turns the whole thing around. And the man in his jubilance is now taking the thing that was holding him. And he's holding it. And the only thing that the Pharisees and the chief priests could say is that, who told you you could carry a bed on the Sabbath? And I'm going to tell you something. God is going to shift something so radically in your life that there are going to be people around you that's going to have a problem with what God did. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you think you can take everybody from your past in your future, you're crazy. There are going to be some people who love you in your past because in your past, you were all, you were all the way jacked up. But when you get blessed by the best, when God shifts your whole life, there are going to be some people you're going to have to cut loose. There are going to be some people when you were in the bed, they were by the bed because they like to see you in the bed. But when God has you holding the thing that was once holding you, there's going to be people that you're going to see that's going to just move away from you. They're going to say, you've changed. You doggone right, I've changed. I've been changed by God. Be you not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I need you to understand that when God does what he's going to do, he's going to shift it so quick and he's going to shift it so radically and he's going to shift it so momentously that some people are going to have a problem. And this is what happens to the man. And it is amazing what happens. The man is laying by the pool. We don't know anything about whether he has faith. We don't know if he's ever heard of Jesus. We don't know if he knows anything about the Christ. Even after he's healed, he doesn't know who's done it. But it is the adversity of, I'm about to close, but you got to get this point. It is the adversity of other people who have said who have said to him, why is it that, that, that who told you that you could carry your bed? And, and, and it, because of their adversity, he now comes to realize that who it was that healed him was not just some prophet. It was not a good man who had some good works. It was Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, the man who, the, who was fully God and yet fully man. And so he came back and Jesus found found him in the temple again and said, now you know who I am. Go your way and sin no more lest something worse happen. And the man who walked away first with healing comes back and now he gets salvation. He would have just had healing if it wasn't for the adversity. He would have just had healing if it wasn't for the backbiting. He would have just had healing if it wasn't for people who had a problem with his blessing. But God said, since you had a problem with me healing him, now I'm going to give him something better. And God wants me to tell somebody this morning that it is through adversity that he's going to shift your whole life. Don't get mad at the haters because they're going to push you to the next level. Don't get mad at your problem. The best thing that ever happened to David was Goliath. If it wasn't for Goliath, he would have never been propelled to the kingship. 